What up, what up, what up, what up, y'all? I am your girl, Candy, and I have Melody Betts with me, and she's about to speak on it. Hey! <laughs> Now she put a little extra little something on there. She gave us a little, uh, little seasoning, you know what I mean? Oh my goodness. So, Melody. Tell, uh, okay, first of all, tell the people, you know, I wanted the guys, everybody out there who was watching, I wanted y'all to know a little bit more about what was going on with the Wiz musical. We are killing it right now. Killing it, selling out. Selling out everywhere. Mm -hmm. And everybody keep asking me for tickets and I'm like, why don't you <laughs> buy tickets ahead of time? Cause I've been telling y'all and I think y'all didn't believe me that it was gonna sell out. You can't just get like the basic price ticket no more. They're gonna spend hundreds, hundreds of dollars. Exactly, ticket. exactly. So I'm telling you, you need to do it, but she is one of the reasons why. <laughs> now, can you tell the people what role do you play in The Wiz? I play Aunt M and Evelyn. Yes. Now, she has two roles in the show, which, I thought it was interesting at first when, you know, we first went through the casting process. I was like, oh, okay, she gonna do both the parts, okay. Mm -hmm. And when I tell you, you do both the parts. <laughs> she do both the parts. But you doing so dope in a way where I don't even know if people realize the same person played on M that's playing Eveline. That has been the goal. Okay. It, it would be lovely <clears throat> to confuse people. First of all, because you don't necessarily, I mean, you can read the playbill and see who I am, but you don't necessarily need to know that they're the same people. Mm -hmm. I, when I was younger and I watched the movie, I used to think that the woman who played I Am was the same one who played Eveline. Oh, you did? I did. You know, oh, okay. You know how when you're young and you watch it something, and sometimes like your perspective or what you see or how you feel, like it changes over time. But mm -hmm. especially when you're younger, you don't fully understand everything that's happening. And mm -hmm. so that's what I thought. I will tell you, my favorite part in the play and, and even when i used to watch the movie it was don't nobody bring me bad news mm -hmm. now when i tell you you bring the house down every show with that song Thank you. Uh, people when you go to the desk where you get all the merch they have these tambourines <laughs> i'm going to tell you now you need to get you need to get a tambourine at the top of the show. So by the time she gets to no bad news, you got your tambourine because everybody want to have the tambourine for that part. Yes. So have your tambourines out by Act Two. Yes. That's when no bad news happens. And if you meet me backstage or, or at the stage door after the show, I'll sign it for you. Oh, that's dope. That's dope. <laughs> So Melody, okay, tell me a little bit more about yourself and what you were doing before you came to be a part of The Wiz. Well, I have been acting for about 15 years now professionally. Mm -hmm. I came right out of grad school and went right into it. Um, Did, is this what you went to school for? Yeah. Oh, okay. I studied, I, I have a um, bachelor's of fine arts mm -hmm. and I have a master's of fine arts. Oh. And so the plan um, was all along to get out of school and do this professionally. Mm -hmm. um, my, my family gave me the permission to do um, what I was supposed to do. Right. Um, which a lot of people don't get that. Right. Right. So uh, I was blessed to have that. And they have supported me throughout my entire career. I came out of school, went right to Chicago and I started acting and I've been doing film and television and theater for 15 years. Where were you from? Chicago. I went to school uh, at Western Illinois University in Macomb. Okay. And left there and went back home to Chicago. You never wanted to go to New York? I did go to New York. I went, I went to New York for five years. Um, when I was in New York, uh, I did a show called Witness Uganda, uh, turned into uh, Invisible Thread. Mm -hmm. uh, off Broadway, and then I did the first, the national tour of A Sound of Music as the Mother Abbess. Mm -hmm. I went from that to um, Jesus Christ Superstar Live with John. Oh wow! I did Waitress. I love working in New York. I love working in New York, mm -hmm. but living in New York, it's hard. It's hard, and the hustle and the grind is too much for my particular soul and spirit. I need mm -hmm. a little bit something slower. That voice. 
Okay. So have you ever pursued music, just like try to get through the record deal thing and all that stuff? No. Never? No. I I released a couple of singles that I just wanted to do. Uh-huh. And I was rec I recorded on other people's albums. Like I did a couple of songs with Speech from Arrested Development. Uh-huh. Um, he's from the A and M or he, you know. Yes, he is. <laughs> I was with a group called Funktelligence for a while. We did a couple albums, mm -hmm. but my own album, I've never, I've never pursued. Well, y'all hear her saying. I mean, I don't even. I, you know what? The whole thought of it is overwhelming to me. But you know what? If you want me to do an album, <laughs> you know where I'm yeah, at. If you want me to you do know? an album, I'm ready. <laughs> Well, you already told us your Broadway background. Yes. What does the Wiz mean to you? Oh, we. The Wiz, uh, I believe the Wiz for me is like one of those um, core moments mm -hmm. that you have in your life that influences uh, what you do with the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. It was the very first musical that I was introduced to. And because of that, uh, I believe that's why I'm in musical theater. It was so important to me that I listened to the soundtrack from the movie when it first came out in 78. Mm -hmm. I listened to that over and over and over again for I don't know how long. It was that important to me. Mm -hmm. And so it's probably the thing that led me to musical theater um, and, and also like made me believe that that was something that was possible for me mm -hmm. because it was other black actors and other black singers um, that right. were doing it. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, if they can do it and it can make me feel the way that it's making me feel, mm -hmm. that I can do it and I can make somebody else you know, feel those same things. What is your favorite part of this show, this version of The Wiz? <laughs> I go over this all the time because, you know, we're asked this often. And so I've been thinking about it. And honestly, I think my favorite part of the show right now is when The Wiz is doing his show. Uh -huh. And he's got the background singers and everything he says, they're repeating. Yes. What did you hear? Yeah. That is my favorite. I, I am backstage every night saying those exact lines along with them and doing the movements and yeah. everything. I love it. It is hilarious. <laughs> what I did appreciate about our version of The Wiz is basically the updated script written by um, Amber. Amber Ruffin. Yes, mm -hmm. Amber Ruffin. When I tell you it's hilarious, mm -hmm. and I don't, like, I've always been a Wiz fan. That That's like one of the musicals that I just watched over and over and over. Like, you know how certain movies, you could just see it over and over again. So in your mind, you're kind of like, okay, well, how is it going to be different? How is it going to change? But little things like what you said, like that, the section with the Wiz and the background singers, it is so hilarious yes. and i was like it reminds me of something i keep trying to remind me what it's like one of those old 70s exploitation yeah situations. yeah black exploitation films it's, it's yeah. hilarious i don't know i can't think but the, but I, it's in that same vein yeah i love it so oh funny. my lord that's my shit i mean <laughs> <laughs> To say what you want to say. Right. So during this tour, how easy or hard is it to be on tour? It's extremely difficult to be on tour. Uh, and so what you have to do, this is my third tour. So I did Sign of Music, I did Waitress, now this. And in that first tour, I was, I had my daughter with me. And she was like, oh, I want to say 11, 12. Oh, really? You took your daughter? I did. Yeah. She was homeschooled. We went to every city and explored the city. We learned all the history of the cities and ate all the good food. She even had like a, a she critiqued, she was a food critic for a little while. She had her own show on YouTube. Even without my child, because she's a, an adult now, it's, it's still difficult. Uh -huh. So you have to take care of yourself and make sure that you're doing things that um, create the feeling of home for you. Right. You have to make sure that you find your conveniences because it's so inconvenient. Mm -hmm. You got to be proactive about making sure that you know where you're going. You have a car. You have, a you know, what you need to get wherever you, you know, you know where to eat. You know where to get mm -hmm. your groceries. Because I'm a little bit experienced, I was ahead of that. You know, I, I, I got Instacart, order my groceries, know where I'm going to be living, where I'm going to be parking, mm -hmm. all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You got to be ahead of that in order to like kind of balance out how difficult it is. Right. Yeah. You ready for to go back to New York? 
wait. I'm just saying, because <laughs> you're touring now. You're touring all the way up until the day oh, you have to go to New York and be on New York stage for six months. Are you ready? <laughs> uh, yes and no. Because I will be ready by the time we're done. I'll be uh -huh. ready to stop touring. Uh-huh. But I haven't lived in New York for some years. And so that is a huge adjustment that I don't know if I've wrapped my mind around yet. I do look forward to having the show there though. Because the New York audience is, that's something else. That's, di that's a different audience. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that is the place where like theater thrives. And yes, you it know, does. Everybody wants to see a show in New York. So I look forward to having the show there and like seeing how people receive us. I think they're definitely going to receive this show like in the best way. Everything about the Wiz musical is top tier from the set, the costumes, all of that. And I think I, I know a lot of people, they were kind of like thinking, oh, yeah, it's not going to be that much of a set because you know it was touring mm -hmm. and when they see it they're like uh oh mm -hmm. oh no no this is right big when mm -hmm. we get to new york you know everything i feel like it's going to get plumped up a little bit more you know when you change venues sound changes uh -huh. right so each time you got to readjust certain things but now it's like you'll have a home yeah and so everything will be said and we'll be able to add more and embellish it and make it even better and on top of that we'll be getting more rest so right we'll be doing better performances and y'all been like, killing it every show <laughs> and that's on no sleep friend i know right? i don't know how you do it you want to so, give them a little taste of something <laughs> okay good because now i don't even know the lyrics yet. You like to <laughs> Seriously, seriously. That's a um, good question though. Have what? you ever forgot the lyric or, or like a line Friend, while you've been on stage? Yes. <laughs> you have? Yes, in this show. In this show, what you forget? <laughs> Which part? It's only been one time. Oh my gosh. It was a hard day, y'all. And this happens all the time. See, what people don't understand is that like actors don't just get on the stage. Singers don't just get on stage. We don't just get on the stage to perform. We have a whole life outside of that. Stuff hits the fan all the time in your real life. Right. And no matter what's going on, you just gotta get on the stage because this is what we chose to do and do what you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, do My your thing. Paid to do, right? So um, it was a hard day. And I forget what city this was, but it was recent. And I went out to do Aunt M and I think I might've been so wrapped up in whatever was happening, I started singing and got to the middle of the first verse and left the building. I left no. the building. <laughs> I was staring off in the space like Raven, like uh, uh, Raven Simone used to do, and that's a Raven. Uh -huh. I just went so and came you back and was like, oh my God, where am I in the song? And I couldn't remember my lyrics, so I just hummed it. What? <laughs> yeah, it was. What like, city were you it was in? Like, put your arms around me, child. Like when you bumped your machine. Then you'll know I love you now as I love you then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I need you. And yeah. What do you do when you have those moments? Oh my God, I done messed up a couple times <laughs> like that where I just totally forgot a line. I've done that like say for instance in like past concerts, like music concerts. So it's easy to hit the people with the microphone if you forget. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Be like, y'all sing it with me. And right? Yeah. Not on stage. But on stage in a play, I I've, I've forgotten a line before, you know. And it skipped me where to the point where the other person had to kind of like reel me back in. You know how you have to kind of tell them they line. You did that the other day. I heard you. <laughs> we do that. We help each other. Yeah. Because we, you know, we after you do this so many times, you know everybody's everything. So like if somebody messes up, they'll help you. But Nichelle didn't help me. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Nichelle was on my lap like, good luck, good luck, girl. And I was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I don't want to hold you up. I know you got another performance tonight. Is there anything you want to tell the people? Well, you know, come see the Wiz. You don't have to, but everybody else is. And everybody <laughs> else is coming. Everyone else is coming. They are loving it. So I wouldn't miss it if I were you. I have friends in Atlanta who I told about the show. Me before too. We got here, and now we're here. And they can't even get in to see it because it's sold out. Get your tickets. Do not wait till the last minute. Don't wait till the last minute. This is the cool thing that I'm like, I love the fact that this show, I mean, everybody loves the Wiz anyway, but this show, you know, the support that we've been getting, yeah. and we've been selling out everywhere. And like in Atlanta, I think we had, this is like 5,000 seats or something oh, yes. more. Mm -hmm. So you got eight shows and every show is sold out. Mm -hmm. That's 40,000 people. I said, we doing Beyonce number. <laughs> what? <laughs> this, Beyonce is doing it. We, we doing stadiums. Right, right. right. That's what's next. We, we in Madison Square Garden. What? Time. You know what I mean? Anyway, you feeding. Like, hey, do what you do. Comes through. That's all I have to say. But thank you. Thank you. And thanks for watching. Speak on it. Oh, oh, oh. I feel like good times now. <laughs> I know it was. It was very good times. <laughs>